G'day everyone. You know, when I turned 40 a couple of years ago, I figured it was a good opportunity to treat myself to yet another watch. And there were a few that I had in mind, but at the time I decided to use my hard-earned birthday dollar dues and pick myself up an MAS Irukandji. Uh, there were some reviews out there already for it at the time, but that design and dial just looked too good to pass up on. So here I am with it on wrist and finally adding my two cents worth about it. So let's start off with the specs. You got a case diameter of 41 and a half millimeters, and with the crown it comes in at 44.7 millimeters. Your case height's 14.9 millimeters, lug tip to lug tip of 45.9 millimeters, a lug width of 20 millimeters. Uh, you got a Seiko NH35 movement powering it with 200 meters of water resistance, and the protection on top is a dome sapphire crystal, and it comes in with a maximum weight of 166 grams when you throw it on the bracelet. So probably the greatest thing about the Urukanji is its case design and finish. It's definitely one of it looks really cool. If you check the sides, true to the vendors claim on their website, you'll see that the watch resembles its Urukanji namesake with a thick bulbous case and dome crystal resembling the body and these downward curving lugs acting as like tentacles. You really have to pick it up and handle it to really appreciate how distinct and clever this design is. The case sides and bezel edge all have a dull and brushed finish, which is handy as any scratches or bumps you get on it aren't going to stand out. Drilled lugs are used here, which makes changing straps and bracelets a much easier task. The crown comes signed with the MAS logo, and one neat feature is that during the purchase process, you can opt to have it positioned at either 4 o'clock or, if you're left-handed or just dare to be different, at 10 o'clock in this example. The uniqueness extends to the polished solid case back. We have a stamped impression of the Irukandji jellyfish on a heavily brushed background. This really helps the jellyfish image stand out on the case back, and unlike laser etched designs, it should stay this way for a long time to come. Running around the outer edges of the motif, you have the speck of the watch. The dial color is sea green, and while the stock photos on the MAS website look like a darker green, in reality, it's a much paler green, almost limey with a tiny yellowish tinge. It's nice to look at, but in the light it looks absolutely dazzling, as this dial has an amazing sunburst effect with a capital S. The light really gives the Irukandji dial another depth of visual appeal. Um, around the dial you've got painted luminances with thick triangular shapes at the 6, 9 and 12 o'clock positions and smaller circular ones elsewhere. They're not overly obvious, but I think the sizing's just right, as they'd overwhelm the dial if they were any bigger. The square cut out the 3 o'clock position houses the date complication. The inclusion of a frame around the date cutout gives the dial a slightly more quality look, while the numerals on the date wheel are large and neatly printed, making it easier to check at a glance. Uh, just under the 12 o'clock mark, you've got the printed MAS logo, and just above the 6 o'clock position sits the watch name and water resistance fitting. Like the indices, the logo and text details are well proportioned. Not immediately visible, but they're tastefully done and still readable when you need them. The dome sapphire crystal protecting the doll adds further depth and interest to this piece, warping the entire view when looked at from certain angles as if the crystal itself is the water and the dial is the bottom. It's well executed and another element I really appreciate. The bezel is a ceramic 120 click affair and while it looks a bit austere with the absence of minute markers, it still has the most important indicators present and helps you focus more on the beauty of that dial. And there's just enough grip on the edges to turn it with relative ease. And if green isn't your thing, you can opt for a more traditional black or blue dial, or if you're still daring to be different, there's other bright colours that might tickle your fancy. To sweeten the deal, the Irukandji also comes with a watch roll to make it easier to travel with it, along with a couple of spare slots, so that's always a nice bonus. And it also includes a nylon strap and bracelet. The strap has quick release spring bars for easy changes, MAS logo etched on the buckle, and a single thick key put a hold that strap end in place, and it does a great job of that. The rivet bracelet is quite good, I reckon, as it includes a mill clasp with the logo stamped on the bottom and uses screw instead of push pins to remove links, making it feel more sturdy. And I love, love the inclusion of six, count them, six micro adjust holes, making this thing easier to get that perfect fit and saves you having to muck around with the bracelet links too much. And best of all that, she wears pretty comfortably with no worries about hair pulling on my wrist. Uh, no end links are present, but to be honest, this makes it much easier to throw it on and off the watch. And because the lugs have so much downward curve, the gap between the bracelet and watch is barely noticeable anyway. Um, I do have a couple of mixed feelings about this watch though. The starting price for the Urukanji is 450 Australian dollars, and while it's not a huge amount, bear in mind that you'll just be getting an NH35 movement in that package. 
it's still a decent workhorse, but when you consider that other watches have this movement at a much lower price point, it does impact the value proposition a bit. But on the plus side, Mass have periodic sales, so if you're patient, you can sometimes pick this up with a 20% discount. Um, even though the total diameter of this piece is just over 44.5 millimeters, the shorter lug width and the overall curvature of the watch make it look and feel smaller. I personally quite like it, but if you're hoping to wear something with a larger wrist presence, well, this isn't it. And as sturdy as those screw pins are, they take a bit more effort to remove and replace. You'll need someone to hold the other screw in in place, like another screwdriver to tighten or remove the screws, so just keep that in mind. Now moving on to the negatives, and I've got a couple of small ones and one big one to mention. Uh, one small negative goes back to that bracelet. The mill clasp and keeper feel rock solid, but similar to the Dina Countrymaster I viewed earlier, there's no release button to undo it, so you either have to pinch the clasp tight or use a good fingernail to get it undone. Another nitpick is the case height. At a bit under 15 millimeters, it tends to sit a bit top heavy and you'll feel it shift side to side on your wrist. And um, if you're wearing your bracelet or strap a little bit too loose, it's going to start sliding around. Um, but the biggest negative I have is the string for the Irukandji's diver characteristics. Uh, to be honest, I felt that the minute and hour hands needed to be a bit thicker and a touch longer to make them stand out on the dial to improve legibility. The bezel also has a bit too much wobble and back play where you can turn it back almost a full minute. And that loom duration is too short, which kind of saddened me a bit because when it's at full charge, the soft blue hues of the hands, the dial and the bezel just look absolutely stunning. It's almost as if I'm staring at an actual jellyfish in an aquarium. But that beauty requires a healthy charge of the UV light, and even then it just fades out too quickly. So as a wrap up, there are a lot of things I love about the Urukanji, and it does so many things right, but it just falls flat in areas that it was actually designed for. So as a watch, the Urukanji is great. But as a dive watch, the Irukandji is not so great. So if you're purely just looking for a dive watch, there are plenty of other choices out suits your needs better. But if you're looking for a dive that's out of the ordinary, or if you really appreciate well-designed pieces, then I encourage you to have a look at this one. And if you ever do get a chance to look at this or hold one of these in person, I'd strongly suggest you do just to see how clever and interesting this design is. But if you own an Irukandji, I'd be happy to hear your thoughts in the comments below. But that's it for now, and thanks for watching, eh?